This is why you shouldn't write your personal statement with ChatGPT. All it's going to do is give you the average of all the different personal statements that have ever been written and give you a combination of them. And what does that make you? That makes you an average applicant. Do you really want your personal statement to be the average of all the personal statements that were ever written? Writing a personal statement with ChatGPT is never going to get you into your dream PhD because it's just not detailed enough, not specific enough, no matter what prompts you give it, it can never know your specific interests. It can never know why you want to do a PhD, what your specific experience was. When you're talking about your research project, it will never know what was your contribution, what was the innovation, what did you learn, what did you struggle with, how did you troubleshoot, things like that. So you have to think deeply about your own experiences, your own interests. It's not going to go and read your professor's research for you. It's not going to tell you this is what you should do in your PhD. It's not going to be able to come up with original ideas because whatever ideas it gives you will be based on things that have been done and that have been used to train the model. So existing data, all it is is a language model which takes things from different places that are already written and it kind of makes something out of it, you know? It is not a human brain. It cannot come up with original ideas. It can give you some suggestions, but that is not what science is. ChatGPT cannot be a scientist. Only you can be. So in this video, I'm gonna show you a client's personal statement written by ChatGPT, and I could tell. And I'm gonna show you the recording of my session with her, going over and providing feedback for her personal statement. This was your personal statement. General comments were that it is lacking scientific detail. It's not telling me much. In the beginning, this thing of like have gotten into trouble because of my inquisitive nature or whatever. Like it doesn't tell them about their education or anything in the beginning. It's more like, you know, talking about being like a naughty child or something. So here, for example, when you talk about your education, you're talking about like the major concepts uh, genetics, genes, etc. What would be good is to give more specific things like what exactly is it about genes or DNA or protein or you know like mm -hmm. a specific thing maybe that you learned in your mm -hmm. courses that caught your okay. attention and make it a little bit more scientific. It's kind of waffly so we need to add a lot more detail in other sections so like this much of an intro without really telling them that much is kind of mm -hmm. wasting space. All I'm really getting out of this is that you did a bachelor's like that's the main Point. But this paragraph I liked because then it shows how your interest in oncology developed through your dental training and specifically head and neck cancer. And here we can add more scientific information because right now you're talking a lot about maybe your feelings or experience that you know you learned that treating symptoms isn't enough and you need to push your boundary to understand diseases at the molecular level to study to make a difference things like that. This can be said way short briefly. Talk here about like okay is there a specific cancer that you learned about was there a specific treatment that you realized okay it's not enough or you know how you talk about understanding diseases at their root yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. what what did you do after that like maybe you read some papers talk about specific mm -hmm. things within cancer biology you want to tell them that you've thought about this in more detail not just surface level you know so for example you know you can even talk about like i was inspired by the research of this this professor mm -hmm. or i okay. read papers on this this topic Mm -hmm. and that's what i wanted to delve into further but like see now mm -hmm. we're already on the second uh paragraph but i still mm -hmm. don't know what in cancer biology are you interested in mm -hmm. what do you want to do this is already too late you know like right in the beginning we want to mention things like i'm interested in this phd because like tell mm -hmm. them as much as possible as quickly as possible okay so they mm -hmm. don't they don't like read and they're looking for details they just want to know quickly okay why are you suited for this why are you interested uh -huh. in this you know I okay, especially for european and uk universities it's like uh mm -hmm. you shouldn't Okay, my master's program was transformative. I learned to think like a researcher, to ask the right questions, to expand my knowledge. But again, you see it's vague, like ask which questions, yes. expand mm -hmm. like my knowledge, but what what knowledge? I still don't know what your knowledge is in cancer biology. Mm -hmm. Very brief, this one uh, about your qPCR, PCR, etc. and DNA cloning. It almost sounds like the techniques you learned, but you also need to show them what you learned in terms of like as a scientist, your hypotheses that you developed, the questions you okay. tested, things like that. Okay. They do want to know like what you contributed, what you were testing and how. So for example, you're using inhibitors. You can talk about the assays, uh, specific techniques you used and how you tested the inhibition. The results are like, no, you, you have to you have to make them more solid because mm -hmm. 
like what is the result right now so again same uh, comment like so your true understanding of precision medicine began during the masters and then you were introduced to the potential and changed how i view cancer forever but exactly like same thing like we i don't know how what are your thoughts about this um mm -hmm. make it more scientific what i mean is these things that you just said you know it shows mm -hmm. more of your knowledge in precision medicine like it's genetic testing based or you have these like customized medicines you said you read specific papers so you could also mm -hmm. reference them a little bit i read the work of this this professor in personalized medicine which uh, made me very interested in it also that it's like the future of cancer medicine targeted therapy like you want to use these keywords these kind of buzzwords etc you know it shows you've actually read about it it's not you're not just saying oh yeah i'm interested but without going deeper into it that's the difference basically over here as well for example add more about what exactly you did in this role because you say you work closely with with the all these you know oncologists radiologists etc but how it's important yeah that you have like a personal fulfillment kind of reason to do cancer research but for phd mm -hmm. it also needs to have some kind of scientific curiosity and you know like specific topics that you're really curious about and interested in so okay. maybe you can think about that and mention something like that yeah. this uh, paragraph was a little too long all about like the uae and those phd programs etc <laughs> and and broad and vague you know again you can cut this a lot for example they know that they're like first in france or wherever sixth in europe so you don't have to say that it's your personal statement keep it about you don't waste words talking about you know something that is focus more on their cancer program how that's different or what inspires you from it or like this line is is okay but too long cutting edge labs etc again it's like you don't want them to feel like you've written this for every uni like think specifically about karolinska or think specifically about specific research groups and what they've done that inspired mm -hmm. you made you interested in this university and in this project so details are evidence that you've gone deeper into it did you use chat gpt by any chance with this yes yes yeah i can tell i can tell because this is exactly this is exactly what uh, what it does, it, it keeps things so vague and broad and generic that, you know, yeah, that's exactly like, because it will use data from all these different personal statements or whatever, so it cannot come up with something that is detailed mm -hmm. and that is mm -hmm. specific. With this SOP, you could apply to any random cancer thing, and that's not what they want. They want to see, yeah. like, very specific things. Uh, and also, it can't it can't get specific and detailed about your interests either. Mm -hmm. And that's why all of this is oh, missing from it. Yeah, yeah so with this line, things like this, again, it's like non-specific chat GPT stuff, you know, real mm -hmm. impact, but what exactly? So you've talked about your specific interest, which is like uh, coming up with treatments or things like that. Mm -hmm. So talk about those specific things, deeper commitment to understanding cancer and its progression. It's just like too long-winded. I fully acknowledge that. Okay, so something like this, we don't need to put in, it's kind of like negative. We don't want okay. an, any line that's putting you down in your personal okay. statement. Like you have research experience. Okay. That's what you need to show. Like be confident in, in what you do know and what you can do. Mm -hmm. Even this dedication, resilience, but it's just a line you haven't given proof of that. So you need to show mm -hmm. like even your failed experiments or whatever that is, that was resilience and more about future goals. And mm -hmm. specifically now, I guess what's missing entirely is like your plans for the actual projects that you're interested in why are you interested in this and how do you fit well in this we need to add a whole paragraph this needs to be kind of the main thing and it's completely missing from your personal statement so here is your chance to then again show knowledge about the field about the research gaps why is this project important to you why are you interested in it what skills do you have that makes you a good fit for this mm -hmm. particular project like why should they take you instead of you know all the other people so you need to show okay how can you contribute to this group and became become like a good fit in this lab and okay. also what you want to learn in the phd as well mm -hmm. um, so you can talk about specific skills that you'll develop in this project maybe specific topics so for example if this is ovarian cancer specific or go deeper mm -hmm. into what they're looking at and then mm -hmm. tie all this to your future goals you want to link like the past to the PhD, like what your experiences and backgrounds are and how it fits well, and you want to tie that to the future also, like how yeah. it um, prepares you for your goals, and then also the present, like what you're interested in right now, and okay. be as, spe as specific and as scientific as possible. Okay. You could reference like their specific papers as well. Even cooler would be if you can add some original ideas 
that you want to really look into for the PhD. If you can find, you know, the research proposal by the professor or by the consortium that got funded, and you can okay. look at what they're planning to do and achieve in the next five, ten years, and say, oh, I'm really interested in this. If they invite you to interview, they'll be like, okay, so what do you think you could do in the PhD, et cetera, et cetera. Or they'll have different ideas and they would want to see that, you know, you brought your own ideas and your own specific things like, okay, this is what I, I'm really interested in. I hope this video helps. And if you'd like to work with me specifically, uh, I can review your personal statement and I can show you exactly what's missing. Does it make sense? Is it good enough? Will it set you apart from other candidates? Have you explained things well enough? Is it sufficient? Um, and things like that. You need real human eyes for that.